All cells of the body share numerous membrane trafficking pathways that communicate between different cellular compartments. But some cell types have their own specialised organelles. Melanocytes, for example, have granules called melanosomes that produce and secrete the pigment melanin in the skin. Grasso Raposo from the Institut Curie in Paris, France, is interested in how cells like melanocytes adapt their regular transport pathways to generate such dedicated organelles. When you end up in these specialized cell systems, you can really follow a specialized cargo and see what is the potential of these ubiquitous transport mechanisms to generate specialized organelles. It was actually in a paper in 2001 in JCB where we first showed that uh, melanosomes originate within the endocytic pathway but remain distinct from like endosomes and lysosomes. So after this first paper, we start really working on the cellular molecular mechanism involved in the biogenesis of melanosomes and in particular what could be you know, the, the mechanisms that could allow for this diversion and segregation of cargo to generate this distinct uh, lineage of organelles. Melanosomes mature through four morphological stages. After forming from vacuolar endosomes, melanin is synthesized and deposited onto fibrillar sheets in the organelle's lumen. Enzymes required for melanin synthesis must be delivered to the maturing melanosome. In 2005, Raposo and colleagues showed that the clathrin adapter proteins AP3 and AP1 were involved in sorting these enzymes to their correct destination. We have indeed shown that melanosomal enzymes interact with two adapters. This is AP3 and AP1. And while tyrosinase, the key enzyme in uh, melanin synthesis, interacts with AP3, the other adapter, AP1, interacts with both tyrosinase and tyrosinase-rated protein 1. But how and where AP1 was functioning remained unknown at the time. In the meanwhile, what was really puzzling is that we always found endosomal tubules really at the periphery of the cell and close to melanosomes. But the cytoplasm of uh, melanocytes is filled with many organelles. So, of course, in this system, a uh, lot of organelles could bump into each other. But uh, this was really striking that these endosomal tubules were really closely opposed and surrounding melanosomes. We found also that in these endosomal tubules, we had many AP1 cutted buds. So we had some gut feeling that AP1 could somehow be involved in positioning these endosomal tubules. So uh, Cédric Delevoye, when he arrived in the lab, he started really asking questions about what could be the role of AP1 in melanogenesis and how AP1 could function. Delevoye began by depleting AP1 from melanocytes using RNAi. Cells lacking AP1 had decreased amounts of melanin and fewer mature melanosomes, corresponding with a failure to deliver the enzyme tyrosinase-related protein 1, which accumulated in endosomes instead. Moreover, the recycling endosomes that usually localised next to melanosomes in the cell periphery were redistributed to the pericentriolar region of the cell, which is actually where recycling endosomes are found in most other cell types. This suggested that AP1 has a dual role. It sorts cargo destined for melanosomes and positions endosomes nearby for easy delivery. The researchers thought that AP1 might be pulling endosomes out to the cell periphery along microtubules. One manuscript that was important for us was the manuscript from the group of Hirokawa, where they showed that the adapter AP1 could interact with a plus and a directed motor, the kinase in kik 13 a so Cedric started investigating whether kik 13 a could function in the same way as AP1. Knocking down kif 13 a also caused peripheral recycling endosomes to compact in the perisuntriolar region of melanocytes. The cells contained less melanin and fewer mature melanosomes, due to the retention of tyrosinase-related protein 1 in endosomes. AP1 and kif 13 a thus cooperate in positioning recycling endosomes in the cell periphery to deliver vital cargo to melanosomes. But how is the delivery made? Do recycling endosomes send out vesicles, or do they form tubules that fuse directly with maturing melanosomes? This time-lapse movie shows recycling endosomes in green and the melanosomes in red. When you zoom in, 
you can clearly see examples of tubular endosomes extending and retracting in the vicinity of melanosomes, which suggested to Delavoye that the organelles might directly contact one another. Melanosomes and endosomes are really uh, dynamic, they are really close, they can like dance together, uh, probably likely to exchange some molecules from endosomes to melanosomes, but maybe from melanosomes to endosomes, we don't know. To determine whether recycling endosomes and melanosomes do directly contact each other, Reposo and colleagues turned to a higher resolution approach. We have been really trying to, to exploit these different complementary uh, electron microscopy approaches, I mean immunolabelings and, and now electron tomography because only electron tomography allows to visualise the uh, organelles in 3D and in particular to see whether there are continuities uh, between these uh, endosomal tubules and the melanosome. Thick sections of melanocytes were imaged from different angles and then reconstructed into a series of tomographic sections through neighbouring melanosomes and endosome tubules. Contours were drawn around the membranes in each section, which could then be used to construct a three-dimensional model of the organelles. The researchers found that the tubule and melanosome membranes were often joined, revealing a direct path for cargo delivery. The question is how some proteins, like the transferrin receptor, it seems to be excluded from the melanosomes, although it is present in the tubules. So the question that we are wondering is uh, how is this gasway maintained uh, to allow only transfer of cell type specific cargo and how is docking and fusion regulated? What are the fusion proteins involved in this process? These are really the questions that we are uh, asking at the moment. The group proposes that AP1 and KIF13A coordinate endosomal sorting and positioning, sequestering cargo like tyrosinase-related protein 1 into specific endosomal domains, which are then positioned close to their melanosomal destination in the cell periphery by transport along microtubules. The cargo is finally delivered by tubules which form from the endosome to contact the melanosomes. It remains to be seen whether AP1 and KIF13A are involved in this step too. You can read more about the whole process in the paper by Delavoye et al. in the October 19th issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.